Welcome to part 3 of the Ross Prototype to Production on Ubuntu Core video series, where we're talking about taking your existing Ross Prototype to production by packaging it as a snap and shipping it on Ubuntu Core. In part 2, we created our example prototype that makes the TurtleBot wander randomly. Today we're going to package that prototype as a snap. Now if you're wondering why we're doing this, well, you should watch part 1. Remember that this is also a blog series. If you'd prefer to read it, the link is in the description below. Alright, let's get started. Now there are a few prerequisites that you'll need to satisfy before you can follow along. Each part in this series builds upon the last, including their prerequisites, so you'll need to make sure you've completed the previous parts in this series. This is the first part in the series where we start to dig into some of the technical details of snaps, but it's not meant to be a complete introduction to them. If you're unfamiliar with snaps, take the tour. It's only a few minutes and the link is in the description below. At the end of this video, we're going to have a snap published in the store that others can install. To do that, you'll need to make sure you have an account. Don't worry, it's free. A link to the store is in the description below. Finally, I'm using Snapcraft version 2.28 to create this series. I suggest you make sure you're at least on that to avoid compatibility issues. Okay, let's make this snap. The first step towards creating a new snap is to create the snapcraft.yaml that tells snapcraft how to put the snap together. We'll do that by running snapcraft init in the root of the catkin workspace we created in part 2. Let's open that up and make it the way we want. First of all, we need to give our snap a name. This needs to be unique among snaps in the store, so let's append our developer name on the end of it for this example. The rest of these fields at the top are pretty self-explanatory. Feel free to make them whatever you wish. These two fields require some explanation. Grade can be either stable or devel. If it's devel, the store will prevent you from releasing into a stable channel such as candidate or stable. Think of it as a safety net to prevent accidental releases. If it's stable, you could release it anywhere. Confinement could really be a series unto itself, and there's some good documentation on it linked in the description below, but I'll cover it briefly here. Confinement can be one of three values, strict, dev mode, or classic. Strict enforces confinement, whereas dev mode opens it up completely while logging access that would be denied under strict. Classic is even less confined than dev mode in that the snap doesn't even get private namespaces anymore, among other things. Now there's a lot more to this, please read that link if you're interested. In the case of this prototype, I know from experience that it won't run confined, so we'll just use dev mode. I'll explain this a bit later, but don't worry, we'll get it running strictly confined before we're done. As you'll recall from the tour, Snapcraft is responsible for taking many disparate parts and orchestrating them all into one cohesive snap. You tell it the parts that make up your snap and it takes care of the rest. Here, we tell Snapcraft that we have a single part that we're calling Prototype Workspace. We specify that it builds with Catkin. We also specify that we're using Kinetic here, as opposed to Jade or Indigo. Finally, we specify the packages in this workspace that we want included in the snap. In our case, we only have one, that prototype package that we created in part two. All right, now things get a little interesting. When we build this snap, it will include a complete ROS system, ROS CPP, ROS lib, ROS core, your ROS workspace, and so on. It's a standalone unit. You are in total control of how the user interacts with it. You exercise that control via the apps keyword, where you expose specific commands to the user. Here we specify that the snap has a single app called system. The command that this app actually runs within the snap is the ROS launch invocation you should recognize from part two. We also specify that it's a simple daemon. That means this app will begin running as soon as the snap is installed and also upon boot. All this and the user doesn't even need to know that this snap uses ROS. Finally, we use plugs to specify that it requires network access. You learned a little about interfaces through the tour, but there's a link in the description if you'd like to learn more about this. That is all the information Snapcraft needs in order to make our prototype into a snap. Let's go ahead and do that now. This process will take a few minutes, depending a lot on your connection speed. You'll see Snapcraft fetch ROS step, which is then used to determine the dependencies of the ROS packages in the workspace. This is only the prototype in our case, which, if you'll recall from part two, depends upon Kobuki node and Kobuki random walker. So it pulls those down and puts them into the snap alongside ROS CPP, ROS core, etc. Finally, it builds the requested packages in the workspace and installs them into the snap as well. At the end, you'll have your snap. 
Although we're planning on using this snap on Ubuntu Core, snaps run on classic Ubuntu just as well. This is a great way to ensure that our snap runs as expected before moving on to Ubuntu Core. Since we already have our machine set up to communicate with the TurtleBot, we can try it out right here. The only hitch is that, while we can deal with UDEV symlinks on Ubuntu Core, Dev Kabuki isn't covered by any interface on classic Ubuntu. That's why we used Dev Mode as a confinement type in our snap earlier, so let's install it with Dev Mode. A few seconds after the installation finishes, you should hear the robot sing and begin moving, just as it did towards the end of part 2. It'll stop moving once you remove the snap. Pretty easy, huh? And if you put it in the store, anyone with a TurtleBot can install it, and their robot would immediately begin moving just like it did for you. Why don't we go ahead and do that now? We're about to use Snapcraft to register and upload a snap using the store account you created when satisfying the prerequisites. For that to happen, you need to sign in with Snapcraft. As I mentioned earlier, snap names are globally unique, so only one developer can register and publish a snap with a given name. Before you can publish the snap, you need to make sure that snap name is registered to you. Assuming that name is available, you can proceed to upload the snap. In the tour, you learned that there are four channels available by default. In order of increasing stability, these channels are Edge, Beta, Candidate, and Stable. This snap isn't quite perfect yet since it requires dev mode, so let's release it on the Beta channel. Once the upload and automated reviews finish successfully, anyone in the world can install your snap on the computer controlling their TurtleBot just like this. So that's it for part 3. In case you ran into trouble following along, the snapcraft.yaml used here is available for reference. The link is in the description below. In the next part, we'll learn how to make our snap work on Ubuntu Core without dev mode by creating what's called a gadget snap. I'll see you then.